welcome everyone. Um, happy Easter for those of you who are celebrating. For everybody else, a happy day off or something. Um, today we are with Francis Martins from Excelate, uh, who is going to tell us about his vision for cross-company integration. I think it's fair to say. Right. So yeah. Francis, welcome. Thank you for being here on a holiday of all days. And uh, tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, uh, what's your background, what's your relationship with Atlassian and how long has it been, has it been going on? So. All right. So uh, first of all, also thank you uh, for this opportunity to, to join this uh, online meeting. Um, I'm, I'm Francis, I'm a developer from my uh, background um, who went into management some long time ago. And I met uh, the Atlassian tools in 2006, um, where we used them in, in a startup. Um, uh, and then I thought it's a really a good, good basis to build a company. And so in 2011, we founded Idalco, which is a consultancy organization focused on, on Belgium and France providing only Atlassian type of uh, consultancy activities. In, um, but uh, as we go, we, we learned quite a bit of uh, use cases or gaps in the Atlassian tool stack, which could be filled with add-ons. I'm sure that uh, any of you are using a couple of add-ons in their environment. So we were lucky to, to uh, develop, uh, or we were able to develop two add-ons. Uh, one is um, this one the table grid editor, uh, which we launched in 2012, which has uh, about uh, uh, 1,000 uh, customers worldwide, and uh, which has been completely renewed in the table grid next generation uh, last year. Yeah. And then uh, and, uh, another use case that we encountered was the fact that companies wanted to be able to connect their JIRAs to, together. And in 2015, we launched Exalate, uh, which is the other one, um, uh, which allows you to, to build like a, a synchronization between issue trackers. And, but as we built this, um, this, uh, uh, this product, something came up really, really uh, clearly, and that's the need for cross-company integration. And that's exactly what I want to show you today. And uh, sorry. So cross-company integration is, um, is the subject of uh, this presentation today. And um, so what is it about? Yeah. So we do see an expo exponential growth of issue trackers uh, worldwide. And uh, JIRA is, is uh, growing exponentially, but there's many others. And uh, today there are more than 120 different uh, commercial issue trackers, which are used for organizing um, companies internally. Yeah? So meaning that uh, with an issue tracker like Jira, you're able to have a better grip on your, your projects, on your services that you provide to your customers, because you can easily uh, track any outstanding issues and know uh, what the status is of, of all these different issues. Yeah? And because, because uh, these issue trackers are that effective in um, in organi being organized in internally, we do see an exponential growth uh, of usage of it. Here you do see a, um, a, uh, a Google trend graph of searches on the term issue tracker. And as you can see, the, the number is going like, like uh, times 10 in a couple of years. Okay. And um, now the thing is also, we do live in a connected and collaborative world. Uh, the chance that you're going to work together with another company that is also using an issue tracker gets higher and higher. And whenever, um, whenever you need to work together with another company, um, you get this, this bit of a friction uh, that exists whenever um, uh, you need to exchange information between the teams uh, with whom you are working together. Uh, here you do see a, a graph where you say, well, um, the potential productivity that, that, that you get by increasing the number of teams that are working on your product or on your service 
should, should uh, increase gradually. So for each time that you add a team, you get some more productivity. But the, the, the fact is also that um, the more teams that are involved in, in, your, in your product development or in your service development, the more com uh, communication that you need to do amongst these different teams. And so the overhead to convey uh, whatever information between these teams will increase uh, exponentially. Yeah. And that's, that's a problem. Because the problem is that, you, uh, that your net output per team will go down. Yeah. So initially, you add more and more teams uh, for, your, for your project. But then you find out that the communication overhead is slowing down the overall uh, productivity itself. And that's not good. Yeah? Uh, because even you have more collaboration, but it results in less productivity. So you want to avoid that. Because if you don't, uh, you get a lot of, of uh, discussions between the teams or between team members where they say, well, um, no, I didn't mean it this way, or this is not the status of, of that project. Yeah. So what we say is information clutter leads to business clutter. Yeah. Because once that the, uh, nobody has a good grip on, on projects, you end up with spending much, much time on uh, discussing uh, the status of your project or uh, the quality of, of the teams with whom you're working together. And that's something you want to avoid at all times because it's costly. Yeah? Um, and what we found out also that um, because this is such a huge problem that people are spending on average one day a week in uh, copying information between different systems. Yeah? And um, well, I'm sure you, you, you agree with me. This is not a... Um, a productive uh, thing to do. Yeah. So you want to avoid that. You want to stop, uh, stop copying data from one system to another. Yeah. So, so I don't think that I'm telling something uh, which is new. Yeah. But, but if, you, if you look at it, what do you really want? Huh? First of all, whenever you work with multiple teams in multiple companies, you want to, first of all, to work in your own environment. You don't want to jump from one system to another to convey information uh, to uh, the partners you're working with. Secondly, uh, you want to reduce the friction. Whenever you exchange information, that should go as fast as possible. And whenever you have a question about uh, the quality of a fix, then you don't want to wait a week or two weeks before you get that answer. Yeah? Because it would stop in, in your release cycle. You want to reduce the cost. And so people who are copying data from one system to another, that's waste of time. That's also waste of resources. And so you don't want that people uh, are wasting uh, time on doing dumb things. You want to have them uh, focus on their business. And you want them to be sure that uh, whatever they do is helping your project uh, succeed in their uh, goals, in its goals. So you might ask yourself, how do you get what you want? Yeah. And um, we do see uh, three different uh, approaches. The first approach is that uh, companies are going to share uh, their infrastructure. Um, the second approach is that companies are going to build an integration between their environment and the environment of their partners themselves. And the third approach is where you buy such uh, such integration platform. Okay, so let's let's focus on each of them um, uh, step by step. So first of all, whenever you share your information, um, you're going um, you're going to create some risk. Uh, so in the sense that uh, if you want that uh, other people access your environment, you have a risk that. Uh, due to misconfiguration, these external parties have access to information they should not see. And that's, that's, that might be a problem. On the other hand, for the external parties who need to access multiple systems, 
they need to, to know and understand how these different systems work and how they have been configured. For instance, uh, on one system, you have to use uh, Slack, the second one is using Jira, and the third one is using HPLM. You can imagine that if you, as an external party, you need to work with three different companies and um, you have to access their, their environment, that's really hard uh, to manage, especially if you need to prioritize uh, all the information which is there. Yeah. So sharing, your, uh, sharing infrastructure is not a, good, not a good idea and it's also not what you want. So secondly, you think, okay, um, why don't we create an integration between our JIRA and the uh, JIRAs of other companies and or the, the other systems? So, but if you look at this, um, it might be a, an easy conclusion. In the end, you have just to massage a couple of REST APIs and you will have some, some integration working. And that's, that's what we see with a lot, uh, a lot of companies that say, well, don't bother too much about it. Uh, we will create our own integration and it's much less costly than if we have to purchase uh, this type of, uh, of software. And that's indeed the case. And so you start your, your initial project to do a custom integration um, and it works because it's a basic uh, integration. Um, uh, use case and deploying it onto your environment is, is pretty straightforward. But then uh, reality uh, comes in, in the sense that uh, the teams that are using this environment will come up with new uh, requirements. Like if this custom field is set, then that, uh, that state needs to change in that case and, and so on. So all these requirements will come in and um, the custom integration will become more complex to implement and to maintain. Yeah. While uh, um, uh, commercial uh, solutions will have the tools in place to allow you to, um, uh, will allow you to implement this type of requirements. But uh, once, once that you have like something that works for all the teams together, yeah, you have to think about maintenance. And especially in a cross company um, environment, um, the chance that your, your partner is going to upgrade their JIRA or to change um, their, um, their workflows is pretty high. And each time that there is an upgrade of a JIRA, you will have to modify your, your custom integration. And so the cost of your custom integration will go up, while in most cases, um, commercial applications will have compatible uh, connectors allowing to keep your uh, current integration up and running as before. Yeah? And so lastly, you have to think about changes. Companies merge, they split, uh, their, their con continuously changes uh, in the business environment, especially now, uh, but also um, in, the, uh, in the way that companies are doing business that will force you to revisit uh, the customer integration itself. And so doing a custom integration um, will require you to come back over and over again to, to that implementation that you made a year or two years ago. And in many cases, the people who have been doing that are, are gone, uh, are gone to another job or gone into another department. And so the point here is doing a custom integration. You have to be careful uh, whenever you make the comparison between uh, uh, make the solution or buy the solution. All right, that's the point. So buying a solution. And of course, then you think, all right, but there are like many, many, many different solutions on the market. And so um, let's, let's, let's think a bit about a framework which allows you to, um, to see which tool is the best for a cross-company integration solution. Now let's take a step back. Yeah? Um, in cross-company integrations, you can look at the longer term and what's going to happen in, in a year, in, in three years, five years, and 10 years and so on. Yeah. So what we see today is that a lot of companies are doing a peer-to-peer -peer type of connection. Yeah? You connect with that one customer uh, with whom you have a lot of interactions 
or you do like a single uh, connection and it just works, it works fine. Yeah, and we do see that more and more companies are uh, going into that direction, into that direction, because that type of uh, integrations is bringing a lot of value. So, but what happens now is that these companies, because they see that value, they are saying, well, so that one peer-to-peer -peer, uh, connection is, is interesting, but what we, why can't we replicate this uh, configuration and start to connect with all our customers or all our suppliers? And uh, just to, to tell you, we have a, uh, one customer who is now going to connect with 40 different customers itself. So, so you have like, like a big network of connected companies that are interacting uh, their environment with, with, the, with the environment with all their customers. Yeah? So we call this uh, clusters of connected companies. And as we go forward, uh, we envision that uh, all these uh, clusters will start to interact themselves. It's a bit like the internet in the past, where, the, where uh, small networks started to, to connect and to interconnect to a worldwide network of uh, connected companies that need to work in a structured manner. So, and that's the vision uh, that we bring to the table. Yeah? And then, of course, you might ask, what solution can provide this type of, of, uh, of integration? Yeah? If you look at the solutions which are available today on the market, most are, are uh, focused on the internal synchronization or integration requirements. We call this the silhouette integration because that environment is, if you compare it to cross-company, much easier to control or to, to design for than if you have a cross-company integration uh, setup. Uh, for the cross-company integration setup, you need a completely different solution. You need a scalable integration solution. Now, have a look at uh, some of the features which are required for such an environment. Yeah? The first and most important feature is autonomy. You need autonomy, you need to ensure that your cross-company integration solution allows you to keep, uh, to loosely couple with the systems of the other companies. Yeah? You want to have complete control on your internal setup. And whatever happens on the other side, uh, you want to specify how changes are being applied on your environment. You don't want to have an administrator of your, of your supplier. Um, okay. This one chat. Oh, yeah. um, so there's a, there's a question box. Uh, if you have any questions, you can add that to the question box. So um, you, you just want to be sure that you have complete control of your own environment. Also that you can modify your, your processes, your workflows, your permissions, whenever you need to, without negotiating with, with the 40 other customers that are integrating with, with your own environment. Okay. Um, one moment. The second uh, feature which is really important is flexibility. Yeah? You need to look for future-proof solution. Because you can imagine that you have your, your Jira connected with three different Jiras of three different customers. And uh, your management team is coming up to you and saying, hey, um, so that integration really works for fine. We have this really important customer. Um, can you, can you uh, also integrate with their Jira or with their environment? But then that customer comes up with requirements which you cannot implement with your current solution. So what will happen is either you have two solutions running to, uh, next to each other, one for the three first uh, customers and one with the new customer, or you have to migrate uh, the, the two solutions into one, forcing the three customers to uh, modify their integration, which is next to impossible. So you really need to have a solution which uh, is future-proof, which allows you to implement requirements that can come up in the future. And a third, um, a third uh, property or uh, feature of these products is reliability. Because especially in cross-company integrations, there's so many things that can go wrong 
or even not go wrong, like the chance that your, that your partner is going to upgrade their Jira is pretty high. And even when this upgrade is happening, you want to be sure that any change that happens on your side will be in, uh, synchronized to, to the other side. You don't want to miss a heartbeat. Yeah? So you have three features. You have uh, autonomy, flexibility, and reliability. And these are the three features you have to look into uh, whenever you look for a cross-company integration uh, product. Yeah. And that's why uh, we built Exalate. And so if we introduce Exalate, it is a um, cross-company integration solution allowing you to connect Jira to Jira, but also Jira to ServiceNow, to Zendesk, to Azure DevOps, uh, to GitHub HP LM. We're currently working on Salesforce and we're expanding our reach to uh, completely new um, issue trackers or work management systems. Yeah? Now, of course, um, we do see quite a bit of traction picking up. Uh, Exalate has currently 700 customers worldwide and it's, it's growing faster and faster. But um, it's nice to see it in action. So I have a demo for you, um, which um, shows you how you can use Exalate to synchronize between Zendesk Jira and GitHub. And uh, this is a company who's using Zendesk for, um, for customer facing uh, interactions, like uh, so that uh, companies can, can raise uh, issues or tickets. Uh, Jira for uh, product management purposes and GitHub for development purposes. And we have Anne, who is, uh, who is our support engineer, Peter, who is the product manager and Deepak in India, who is uh, the developer of a funky calculator. Yeah? So the funky cal calculator, which is obviously a, um, a, um, a uh, um, fictive uh, example, um, is, uh, is as follows. Eh? So uh, on the side of the funky calculator, there's a help button, which is provided by Zendesk and George, um, who um, enters uh, has a problem because when he adds one and three, uh, the result is six. And that's a problem, of course. Yeah? So if we switch now to the Zendesk environment, there you would see that the ticket has been raised. And Anne, our support engineer, will now uh, uh, look at the ticket, uh, provide some reply to, uh, to George. Yeah? and uh, saying that uh, she will check with the development team. Now, you will see uh, just by ch uh, changing uh, the ticket type to problem and changing the um, uh, status to open, a trigger uh, will be uh, triggered, which will transfer the ticket from Zendesk to Jira. Yeah. Now, um, so that's something that you do in Exalate is you can define triggers where you say, well, this is the set of tickets that need to be transferred automatically uh, to a chair itself. Yeah. So um, the trigger will then exhalate uh, the issue towards Jira and uh, Anne can see in the UI of Zendesk that uh, the ticket has been synchronized. And by the way, Exalate is, is a world, word play on uh, Escalate. And so if you escalate an issue, um, and then, well, it was a typo, um, we, we found out that Exalate was not used and that's uh, how, how the name Exalate came into being. So uh, the issue is now Exalate towards um, um, Jira. And now you can access the twin of that issue, which is a copy um, with all the comments that, uh, that have been added to the ticket itself. Now, of course, Peter, who is a product manager of this uh, funky calculator, wants to have uh, some additional information about the version um, of, of uh, the product. And so he's adding a comment in Jira, which is now uh, synchronized automatically back uh, towards uh, the ticket in Zendesk. And now Anne will be able to ask that question to George and then add the comment um, the response to Peter's question into the uh, Zendesk environment. As you can see, 
Uh, Anne and Peter are each working on their own environment. And that's exactly what you want whenever you do this type of integrations. Yeah? So uh, Anne is adding, this is version one, two, three. And uh, that information is now sent over back uh, to, to Jira itself. Now, Peter, of course, he wants to transfer this information to the development team because it's obviously a bug. Yeah? So what he does is, first of all, he will confirm that it will be fixed. So that's something that uh, Anne knows and can communicate back to George. Uh, and he will change the component to a uh, calculator. And again, um, by doing so, um, this will trigger, um, in the context of JIRA, um, this will trigger actually to pick up uh, the JIRA issue and send it over to the GitHub um, uh, that Deepak is using. Yeah? And so you can see that the UI or the configuration that you do with Exelate on Zendesk is identical on JIRA and also on GitHub and so on. Yeah. So uh, here um, you, would, you can see now this uh, issue is now connected with the Zendesk ticket and with the GitHub uh, issue uh, in India. Yeah? Now, if you now uh, jump over to the uh, GitHub issue, you access the twin. Okay. Now there you, uh, you can see what Deepak would see. They would see that um, all the information, uh, all the comments that have been exchanged between Peter and Anne and the customer are available uh, for Deepak to, to review uh, the case. Yeah. And now uh, Deepak wants to confirm that it's a problem and it will be fixed in the next release. It just adds a comment to the GitHub. No. And again, uh, the whole uh, functionality uh, will, will uh, be triggered uh, by Exelate. Okay. And so uh, that comment will be synchronized toward the Jira issue and also immediately will be synchronized uh, to the Zendesk ticket uh, for Anne. Right. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So you see, so everyone can work in their own environment. Um, and because, because Excellent is deployed on every, um, before every tracker, yeah, you have this autonomy because the way that you configure Exelate is per tracker itself. So the way that uh, what you specify is which information is being sent out and that you can specify only um, public information should be sent and use uh, as an Exelate administrator, you will also specify how incoming information needs to be applied. Yeah. Now you might wonder, okay, nice, but uh, what about security? Um, security is really important in cross-company integrations uh, uh, because, because you have all this information floating around between all the different systems. And for that, we have a resource on the exelate.com uh, website, which is the Exelate Security and Architecture White Paper, which details out uh, all the details, well, which provides all the details on, on the security and architecture uh, details. Well, aspects of the product. Now, um, you might now wonder how to get started. Yeah? So um, you can evaluate, you can, uh, so what you need to do, you install on each side of the connection, uh, Exelate. You connect both using the handshake protocol, which is uh, part of the product. Uh, you customize the synchronization at the automation and you start to synchronize between the two environments. And in most cases, uh, customers are able to implement the basic synchronization in less than 30 minutes, right? So you might wonder what are the next steps? You can talk to an expert or you can start your free trial. Um, but also uh, there are a lot of Exelate partners and I would like to highlight uh, Demicon and Kreuzwarker who are both uh, Exelate partners who can provide you expert advice on how to use uh, this product. 
So uh, with this, um, we we'll say you have to uh, capabilities to stop copying data, yeah, and you can start just to sync it. And that's uh, that's my presentation. That's my pitch. Okay, thank you very much, Francis. Uh, and while I promote everybody to panelists. Um, we have a first question. Can you compare your product to cloud integration services like Zapier? Hopefully I, I spelled it correctly. And while you answer that, I will basically just make everybody a panelist. So, All right. So uh, Zapier is an automation uh, platform allowing you to automate um, the connections. And you can implement uh, a synchronization with Zapier, but uh, you have to do all the all the all the legwork yourself. So, like updating Jira's comments is is a different automation rule. Uh, uh, custom fields, uh, bidirectional um, synchronization requires a lot of Zapier rules. And so, while Zapier is a automation product. Um, Excellent is an integration product. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, Matthias. Okay, okay, my question. Um, you didn't talk about the architecture, but when I um, rem remember right, um, uh, it's not only a plugin, it's an architecture with an extra service, yes? Extra server uh, mm -hmm. running with services. We don't need only a plugin, we need an extra server. Well, it depends on the deployment. Let me share my screen again. Um, I will show you this this graph, which is the deployment model. Uh, yeah, like this. So, so do you see this uh, for Exalate? So Exalate is deployed as an add-on on Jira server, and so it's just like any other add-on that you have today. Uh, on Exalate Cloud, is wh whenever you install uh, Exalate, it's deployed automatically on, onto our Exalate Cloud. So for this. These two, you don't need to deploy anything yourself. Um, that's that's uh, all included in, into the product. In the case of uh, uh, Zendesk and ServiceNow in the cloud or GitHub in the cloud, um, we do provide two deployment models. One is uh, where you host uh, the environment yourself on premise, or where you use uh, the Exalate cloud itself. So you can, with a couple of uh, clicks, you can have this Exalate uh, node deployed uh, for your purpose. But if you say, well, for information purpose, uh, purposes or information security, um, we want to have Exalate on-premise, that's totally possible. Now, once that you have set up uh, the Exalate on both sides, uh, the uh, communication is direct between the two. There's no intermediary service um, which which will interact with the um, uh, with the Exalate or with your messages. Yeah. So uh, everything is peer to peer. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So it also means you do not have a copy of the data that is exchanged somewhere. No. So um, so there's no copy of the data. The uh, only thing is like in the, um, in the case of GR Cloud, the Exalate applications are running on our uh, environment and the data that, which is being kept is the uh, relation between uh, the issues. And so if you have a GR Cloud issue and a um, GR uh, server issue, the, um, the link between the two is, is being tracked, but not the data itself. So that data resides in the, uh, in, of course, in the uh, issue tracks. Okay. Um, any other questions from the audience? No. Um, I have a question. Ah, Stefan. Um, what is your vision on like a cross cross company way of working? Is it as simple as just mapping? A status from company A to a status to company B, or is, is it still necessary to have a deeper uh, shared knowledge of the way of working? So how it, how it uh, sh um, shows today is that you need that, uh, that deeper knowledge. Uh, people are saying, well, even you have the flexibility to integrate everything, um, you still need to talk with your partner to agree 
on, on the workflow orchestration or uh, like what information needs to be exchanged. Um, and, but uh, hopefully we, we can get to a common uh, model, issue model, uh, where everybody can, can uh, work against. So that they say, well, uh, an issue is uh, either to do, in progress, resolved and done. And that are the, the common statuses which are used by everyone. Yeah. Or to where everyone can map into. But that's, that's something that we expect to evolve uh, over the years. Okay, thank you, clear. Okay, any other questions from the audience? Then I have one. We had last week, we had uh, Kate here from Ops Genie, um, and she uh, also demoed the integration of Ops Genie with 200 other um, um, tools, monitoring tools and everything. Um, so there are a couple of solutions out there who uh, do not quite the same what you do, but they also have integration with Slack and everything. Mm -hmm. um, do you have use cases, for example, Ops Genie, because it's a Atlassian core product now, uh, mm -hmm. how that collabor co collaborates, coexists, or is the, how, do, how that works? Um, we, we didn't look into that, that one yet. Uh, and I also think that that's, uh, there might be a slightly different uh, use case than the ones that we are encountering now a lot. Yeah. Um, it might be. We, uh, I would have to look into it with uh, Ops Genie. Yeah. We, we do see a lot like we do get requests for other issue trackers like Poddesk and Freshdesk. Uh, Salesforce, obviously, we're currently working with it. So mainly work management systems, uh, which are used internally and which require this type of integration. Okay, thank you. Other questions? No. Uh, can I once? ask a question? Ah, okay, tell me. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, you have a limited set of available actions for a certain system. Uh, is it possible to extend this set with, for example, uh, scripts uh, with script runner for Jira? So, um, well, maybe I can just show you how you configure this. Uh, uh, Explain one moment. Because the Xlate is, is in the first place uh, allows you to configure the mapping and transformation using Groovy. So let me see here. Uh, this is the Jira. Uh, I, am I sharing my screen? No. No, you're not. Wait well, one moment. Um, so we have a Jira here. So whenever you install um, Xlate on, on Geo, you will get this in the Manage Apps. <coughs> and here you build connections. And the way that you specify a connection is, um, of course, to what tracker that you connected to. But also, to do it, please. Um, like, uh, okay, so let's use this one. So you specify rules, and rules are uh, Groovy scripts, yeah, which allows you to specify how and what information should be sent. Here, for instance, um, the, in the outgoing sync, you specify what should com be contained in the message being sent from this Jira to the other side. And for instance, if you want to limit uh, the comments and only send the comments which are non-restricted, you can use one of the uh, um, uh, helpers to set up that uh, synchronization or to limit this uh, comments itself. So you can have a look at our documentation site. For instance, it's um, filter local. 
Yeah, yeah. So if you say, well, I want to filter all the uh, restricted uh, comments, you can just add it like this to the uh, to the outgoing scene. Okay. So you change this to that. From that moment, all the uh, restricted comments have been in sync. Um, now, because uh, the incoming sync will specify how incoming messages need to be applied. Yeah? And uh, this one is uh, something that we are experimenting with, is uh, with uh, specific uh, types of information conflicts. As you can see, you can uh, be uh, really specific in how it behaves. And because Excelate runs in the process space of Jira, you can use any of the Jira services uh, that are exposed, including all the add-ons. For instance, if you want to do an integration with Insight as an add-on, then that's perfectly possible. Yeah. Here, uh, you would use uh, this Groovy script to, to access the Insight information, extract whatever you need, and put that into the message being sent over to the other site itself. So to, to, to answer your question, what um, can, you, can you integrate with a script runner? Um, you have already quite a bit of capabilities in Excelate to, uh, to implement advanced uh, synchronization cases. Thank you. Yeah, also uh, for, for your information, there's also a community site uh, for Excelate, we had to start with the community site because Atlassian Answers was, was not uh, sufficient because uh, some people are using, uh, are doing like an integration between GitHub and ServiceNow. Yeah. And so they have no, no specific uh, Atlassian related questions. So if you have questions there or if, if you want to see how Excelate is being used by, by, uh, by our customers, there you can already start to see uh, some of the use cases. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Um, any other questions from the audience? Going once, <laughs> going twice, and gone. Thank you very much, everybody, uh, for joining us today. Thank you, Francis for the presentation and the explanations. Um, and uh, we hope to see you around in Berlin someday. Hopefully. In happier yeah. days. The next so, uh, beer, beer garden. Thing. Yeah, beer garden, or you're always welcome to one of our meetups when we have them again. So. All right. Very so well. with that again. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much for, for your time. And then uh, hopefully uh, in, the, in other times we meet in face. Uh, face, -face. See you around. Yeah, bye. bye. Bye, everybody. Ah, one, one short reminder. Sorry, before everybody's leaving. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, we have our mini summit next week on Thursday on the 23rd of April. Um, please join and discuss your impressions with, the, with our panel of experts um, to um, discuss the announcement during the remote summit. Uh, how you're managing during times like these. Um, is business becoming better or worse because everybody's working remotely um, and so on and so forth. So see you, see you again Thursday next week, hopefully. Um, bye.